Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. Normally, we don't have any sponsored videos. This video is sponsored by an organization and a resource called Covenant Eyes. More on that later. As we start, though, I just wanted to highlight a couple things. It's the truth about the human heart. It's about your human heart and my human heart. And that is this, that in the beginning, God made us good, right? He made us in his image and likeness, and he made us for love. You know, we know that God's deepest identity is that he is love, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, an eternal communion of love, eternal exchange of love making us in his image and likeness, your heart is made for love. Of course, we also know that our hearts have been broken. We also know because of the fall, because of sin and brokenness in the world, our hearts, that, that heart that's made for love has been twisted. It's been broken. And so now because of that, we experience these two extremes, right? And all on this spectrum, the extreme of, of a willingness to just ignore people, to be indifferent to people, to, to um, be unbothered by them or, or to neglect them, and the temptation to use people. One of the ways, again, that affects virtually every human heart is we're willing to use the beauty of the human person for our own pleasure. I mean, that's, that's the, this reality is that, you know, when Adam wakes up from deep sleep and he sees his bride, he sees Eve, when they see each other, that is the first love song ever recorded where Adam just bursts into song and he says, at last, this one is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one is the, is the one, you know, he'll, this is what the reason why man cleaves to his wife and they become one flesh. That's why the reason he leaves his father and mother. This is the reason why men do all these things is just for the chance to love, to lay down their lives for this, for the other, right? For this woman. Now, the very last line of Genesis chapter two is the man and his wife were both naked, yet they felt no shame. We go into Genesis three and in Genesis three, there's this brokenness. So this man and this woman, human beings, humanity, who were made for love, who are made to, to actually rejoice in, in, in the beauty of the other person and rejoice in love, we're now tempted to use other people. Now we're tempted to manipulate other people. Now we're tempted to use another person for our selfish pleasure. So what, what happens immediately when the sin happens, right? When they choose this sin, their eyes are opened and they immediately cover themselves. They immediately cover themselves. And not they don't put hats on and little mittens on. Put, don't cover their elbows. They cover the very parts of their bodies that differentiate male and female. So this is very significant. We're all tempted to use each other in one way or another. But one way that is common to virtually all of us, if not absolutely all of us, is we're tempted to use each other sexually. And so here's the woman. She has to cover herself. Here's the man. He has to cover himself. But from that moment on, this is the temptation to use each other. If this is one of your temptations, if this, if this is one of the things you're experiencing, you're not unique, that this is very, very normal. Here's the thing that's not normal. We live in an age right now where pornography is absolutely everywhere. This, this is a, meant to be a word of encouragement. If you find yourself in a place right now where you're like, I, I can't get away from this. Like I, I feel powerless here. I feel, I feel helpless in the face of just this onslaught of images that are absolutely everywhere. You're not wrong. Like you're, you're right. In fact, I remember, I don't know if it was Christopher West or Jason Everett, some of those guys who talk about this a lot. Someone had pointed this out to me. They said, you know, there's great saints who have lived uh, through many difficult and dark times in the history of the church. But none of them have had to live in the situation that we're in right now, where pornography has the three A's, right? The three A's of pornography. It's available. It's affordable. It's anonymous. These are the three deadly A's, right? It's, it's available, it's affordable, it's anonymous. If you have a little magic rectangle, right, a phone, you have access to a world that is, I was to say depraved, it really is, or that a world that is just shows the brokenness and the, the, the depth to which human beings are willing to use other people. Constant access, it's completely available. And it's affordable, right? It's basically free, right? Virtually wherever you go, Pornography, it doesn't charge you anything, it doesn't cost you anything financially, and it's anonymous. Just delete the history and, and move on with your day. And because of these three A's, these deadly A's, right? It's available, it's affordable, it's anonymous. Too many people have found themselves powerless. Too many people have found themselves dominated by this temptation where in former days and other times, saints didn't have to experience this, these same degrees of availability, affordability, and anonymity. So what do you do? What we don't do is we don't give in to discouragement. What we don't do is we don't give up. What we don't do is we don't say, well, this is just how it goes and I'm just gonna lay in the sewer and stay there. What we do is we rely on God's grace. 
What we do is we lean into confession. Again, my friend Nick, he always says this, if you fall, fall into the confessional because that's where God desires us. When we need him the most, that's where he is there for us the most. You're not powerless because of God's grace, not powerless because we have the sacraments, but you're also not powerless because there are ways to decrease the power of it being available. There's this resource called Covenant Eyes. And here's the thing, in the confessional, when I'm talking with people one-on-one, if ever they bring to me, Father, I feel powerless in the face of this. I mean, it's just everywhere. Pornography is everywhere. I can't get away from it. I say, get Covenant Eyes. They say, but it costs money. I say, okay, yes, um, your, soul, your soul is worth more than a couple dollars a month because you found yourself in this place of powerlessness. You find yourself in this place of discouragement. You find yourself in this place where you're just like, I can't escape this. Get Covenant Eyes. Why? Well, because one, it has some features that reduce availability, right? There are some, there are some internet blockers, those some, some kind of things like that. Really, really helpful. But I believe the, like the, the secret sauce of Covenant Eyes is not the blockers because everyone knows you can have restrictions on your internet and you know you can figure out a way to get around those restrictions. The beauty, the genius of Covenant Eyes is it attacks that third A, anonymity. And when I say attacks, I mean, <laughs> it invites a person, every person, if they download Covenant Eyes to their phone, their device, their, their, their computer, whatever it is, it asks you, it asks you for who is your accountability partner that you say, I want them to get an email every day, every three days or every week, you, you determine that reveals where I've been. And it's so good. Now, if I said that and you're like, ooh, gulp, <laughs> good, good. That might mean that you should get covenant eyes. Why? Because if we can take out one of those A's, if we can take out the, the A of availability, yeah, get rid of your phone, great, awesome, done, <laughs> over. Get rid of your tablet, get rid of your computer. If that's gone, well then great, hey, you've gotten rid of availability. But you probably can't. You might have to get rid of anonymity. And we get rid of anonymity by bringing in accountability. To have that person, again, the person you trust, and then, hey, if I'm struggling, you get that report that says, okay, he's been over here or she's been over here, then you're gonna be the one to call me up. You're gonna be the one who says, hey, how are you doing? Have you gotten to confession yet? Let's go. Because there's such an incredible grace of bringing our sins into the light, but in a controlled way, right? We bring our sins into the light in confession. It's a controlled way, it's safe still. And we bring our sins into the light when it comes to it, this accountability through covenant eyes. And it's controlled. It's not like everyone gets this email blast of here's all the places that Joe or Susie have been. It's the person you trust. You're not alone. This is the, this is the remarkable thing. When we can get rid of anonymity and exchange it with accountability, then there's the possibility of freedom. I know there's some people who are going to hear this, maybe some people who are going to watch this and say, yeah, maybe me someday. Or even some who say, I tried the accountability thing and it didn't work. Well, here's where accountability doesn't work. When accountability relies only upon me or only upon you, like I have to be the one to elect to share this thing, then yeah, a lot of times it breaks down because, you know, we're embarrassed. We don't want to bring it to the light. But when the accountability is baked into the operating system and it's gonna, you're going to have accountability whether you like it or not, whether you choose it or not, that's the kind of accountability that really, really matters. Right now, the choice is, do I want to stay stuck? Right now, the choice is, do I want to keep my environment the way it is? Or do I want to grow in freedom? Do I want to be willing to be ruthless with my environment? Patient with yourself, but ruthless with your environment so that you can begin to take steps in freedom. If you're at all interested in checking more out about Covenant Eyes, just uh, follow this link up here or follow the link in the notes below. Know this though, you are not alone. Know this, that this is an unprecedented time in human history when it comes to this particular sin. And because this is an unprecedented time, maybe we need to take unprecedented measures to get freedom. I'm praying for you. You know, I always say, please pray for me. Anyways, for all the Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. <laughs>